of the evening. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll have uh, introductions. Let's see, look, Mark, I can't see you, but let's start back with you. Uh, Mark Ice, I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. I'm Amy Aper, private citizen. No, you're not. No, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a member of the board of zoning. Thank you, Amy. Welcome. She's also a citizen. Oh, that's true. All right, you're, you're a dual role tonight. Uh, my name is Riley Dixon. I write for the Yellow Springs News. I'm Darian Smith. I'm doing undergraduate research with the University of Dayton. Welcome. I'm Alex Clue. I am currently the land director at Agraria, but about to switch over to the outreach director at Agraria. I'm Gary Shorter. I'm a neighbor of Agraria. Mm -hmm. I heard about this meeting and I just wanted to be a part of it. Okay. Very good. Who are you? I'm not sure. Uh, Kyle Allen, I'm the fire chief. Hi, I'm Margaret. So let me just go officer. No, Richard Saw, zoning inspector. I'm Marilyn Moyer, township trustee. Chris Mutcher, township trustee. I'm Hollister, township trustee. You are late arrival? Yes, Steve Word. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Um, I would now move for the adoption, or I would now entertain a motion to move for the adoption of the minutes of May 16, 2022. I so move. I second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections to the minutes? I did not see any. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Leisure? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. I have now entertained a motion to approve payment of the bill in the amount of $244,578.82. Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, broken down general fund, $8,672.26. Fire fund, $61,692.47. Cemetery fund, $6,164.94. EMS billing, $5,350.36. Road and bridge, $5,388.79 and bond retirement $157,310. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> that does bump that up to touch. Is there a motion? Oh, it must be. I, I need so move. Okay. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding <clears throat> payment accounts? Maybe we we'll vote, please. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for the period with invitation for the Tecumseh Land Trust, um, which was yesterday in the meeting. We'll have BMC employer update webinar, the CDC workplace toxic hazard studies, OPWC round 37 county application due date, which we're probably not going to participate in. Green County Leadership Float, July 22nd. Uh, Margaret, I'm not sure you're going to be here, but you're going to do that again? What? The float down to Little Miami with everybody? I was thinking about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I heard it was lots of fun. I missed it last year. It was fun. Or two years ago. Uh, County Auditor's request for a certificate of benefits. Um, done. I assume that's done. Contact with the uh, uh, surveyor, Mr. Sutton, regarding the new cemetery. Uh, that's done. I'll bring it out somewhere. June. Take that later. Yeah, June 29, 22, Grassroots um, Clipping Newsletter. That must be that must be one long range newsletter, but we'll hopefully be here for it. I'll have Township Association May 20th, 27th alert. Um, contact request for the High Township Association. Uh, that was the email regarding Dead Tree Limb on Jacoby Road. That was for Dan. Green County Development reminding of the ARPA grant that's coming up the second contra, contra, whatever it's called. Green County Board of Health June 2nd meeting, NBRPC Board of Directors meeting, um, Realwood sign update on deletion request. Uh, we'll get to that. Auto State invoice. PERS Voluntary Life Insurance Open Enrollment. Star Ohio Investment Document available client consent form for legal representation for a uh, change of uh, our uh, legal representative for the Kingwood 
Project, second annual annual anti-racism event, June 4th. Hmm. That passed also. Bylaws of the BZA and Zoning Commission discussion. And the fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for the contract. Two, are there any further correspondence in or out? Which you flagged one of these real wood signs. Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about that? Sure, we can do that. Uh, I haven't read it. Okay, well, let's get to the cemetery because that's where it is. And then we'll, okay. We'll do it. Um, any other correspondence discussion? Uh, public comment on agenda items. We have a lot of public. Is there any comment on anything that we're uh, happy for us this evening? Or anything you want added that we bring up later? Will, you are on the agenda. Do you want to comment on it now or do you want to wait till? No, no, I just didn't see a copy of the agenda. So yeah, okay, well that's somehow you're not. I didn't put it on there because I forgot. Okay. That's that. We can have okay, you can, you can leave. I don't mind, no, I don't mind waiting either. I just want to make sure we're okay. doing that tonight. We are, and it, it, it won't be very long. I have a question in the back. I just want to make a few comments relative to the May 2nd report out of the BZA hearing. I can do that during the zoning inspector report or now? Yeah, probably that would be as good a place as any for it. Sounds great. That's okay. Um, Georgia, kind of, can you wait just a few minutes as we get through, and we'll get through Collins Park, and then we'll... Bring you up. Okay, good. Um, speaking of which, Colin. Okay. <coughs> All right, uh, since the last board meeting three ish weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, we've had 61 EMS incidents and 30 fire record. Uh, only 11 of the total were in bath townships. Incidents of note. Uh, we responded to a single car rollover crash on Polkett Road. Uh, two patients were transported on that call. We received uh, assistance from our friends at Houston and Suitable Township. Uh, one of those patients unfortunately did pass away. I'm sure a few days ago from the trauma center. Uh, we also had a mutual aid uh, response to Pitchin for a building fire. Uh, and uh, oh, excuse me. And a call to the Clifton Gorge for a uh, Water rescue and so reported as a dog in distress. And it turned out uh, two coyotes, not in distress, but uh, well, they were in distress because they were trying to get something to eat. I guess, so. Where did the water come in? Uh, it was in the river in the gorge. So, uh -huh. uh, so okay. it turned well, out. Wait a minute. There was no person, no human, no human. So we were there. called to rescue the. Yeah, it came out as a dog basically drowning. So it started out as one dog, became two dogs. Then when we got there, it became three dogs. And then we found out it was two coyotes chasing a beaver. <laughs> no beavers were injured in this incident? One. Oh, one beaver was. I see. Did you video any of this? <laughs> Never dull moment. Fire department. Now, sometimes we are able to make insurance claims. Is there any? Can we build the Division of Wildlife for this? I don't even try. I want to hold your breath. Is the coyote covered? <laughs> yeah, that work is gone. Okay. <laughs> um, we've got two resolutions uh, before you. Resolution 2022-22, uh, which is hiring a part-time personnel, or part-time person. Uh, would be uh, hiring uh, Kendall Kunick as a part-time firefighter in the uh, for the C shift and help reduce our overtime. And he's a firefighter two and an EMT basic. And our first and only so far hazard recognition officer, which is a certification the state created a couple years ago. It's like a junior fire inspector. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about him, his background, his experience? Uh, well, he was born in a small town in Georgia. No, um, he is from, um, he currently lives in Kevin. Uh -huh. He is from uh, the South Lebanon area. 
city. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, did his training at Butler Tech, and currently works also part time at Truffle. Mm -hmm. uh, put an application in because, like, the vast majority of the staff we've hired in the, re in the past couple of years knows either Cassidy or Casey Brewer. Um, <laughs> And uh, in this case, also the sister, who's also an EMT, but doesn't work for me. Um, You're slipping. I know. <laughs> um, seems like a really nice kid. Yeah. Uh, he's 21, so mm -hmm. he's young. Mm -hmm. but should fit in pretty well. Yeah. How many hours do you expect him to work? I mean, a, a full. He's going to do 124 every six days. Uh huh. So, not a whole lot, but mm -hmm. it'll definitely help reduce the extra shifts there. Well, then I would entertain a motion to adopt resolution 22, 2222, uh, hiring Mr. Kunick. I suppose. I will second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Are you me we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Uh, we also have resolution 2022-23, which is appointing uh, appointment of volunteer personnel. Uh, in our college student and his M-E-L-E, um, but um, she's uh, not certified, but very excited to join the fire department. And, uh, be one of us. Where do you anticipate she'll receive her training? We have to figure that out still. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's been through an AMT class, mm -hmm. didn't take her national registry exam, and, she may still be within the window that she could take the exam, which would make life really easy. Yes. At least for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for her, but um, but if not, we'd have to find a class. Probably we've had really good luck with uh, uh, the class that Premier Health puts on uh, at Dr. Valley. And uh, it's also half the price of the other classes, mm -hmm. which is very nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. So. What do you anticipate? She'll do, or how much she'll be here, or what do you what, until she gets certified? Hopefully, as much as she can. I mean, she seemed pretty eager to to join and, and start going calls and like that. So, we have to do 36 hours a month. And it's only when they're certified, we try to encourage them. Wow. They can go on calls and not having any certification. I mean, we. I mean, as a third or a yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, I understand. Understand. We like that and go go on calls before they start classes to mm -hmm. see if we want to invest the money. Mm -hmm. Or if they, you know, a lot of people like to be like the idea of being an EMT and then they go on a call and see that it's sure. not always fun and exciting, yeah. and then may decide they they don't want to do it, which saves us significant mm -hmm. So that would be the plan. But she's been through the interview, obviously, and it's yep, great. interviewed very well. Mm -hmm. Background check was fine. Mm -hmm. What? Um, it's not great. What year is she at? <laughs> um, first or second? I can't remember. First or second? But she's relatively new. Mm -hmm. I think actually first year. Yeah. yeah. Is she from the area or? or Pennsylvania. <coughs> Pennsylvania. Well, hearing that, I entertain a resolution or I entertain a motion for res adoption resolution 2022-23. Move that we adopt resolution 22-23. I'll second it. And a second. Any further discussion? Resolution. If not, may we vote, please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hauser? Yes. Thank you. Really fast, can I get a spelling of the two individuals, Kendall and... No, sorry. <laughs> uh, Kendall is two L's, and Kunick is C-U-N-I-C. -C. Thank you. And then Elizabeth is Elizabeth with a Z, and last name is M-E-L-E. Or, or just put it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, we're over. Resolutions, uh, barring any other near fatal diseases, I will be on vacation starting Friday and back on the 20th. Um, Sorry, <coughs> 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 
I bought some water. Okay. I'm fine. Just a Okay. Pay no attention to the. Yeah, talk about. And then the last one, I'm sure you know, we had a higher than normal payroll expenditure uh, due to some fire chief who was out for 40 hours on sick leave, and then I had two other key staff members who were off on vacation and uh, sick time, 72 hours each. So. Uh, had a lot of holes to cover, unfortunately. Well, I mean, we got covered, but unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, we don't work for free. So. I audited a couple, a pay period a couple of periods ago, and we had a pretty substantial overtime load on that, yeah, too. We've had some, I mean, the downside is that we don't have the ranks of staff to you know, yeah. pull that out of the flow, so unfortunately. Plus, we also had rope rescue class, which we have to pay people. Mm -hmm. Well, we, they want to go, but we pay them all they can. So. Yeah. <laughs> we have to bribe them to attend. Don, you wanted to mention something? Uh, yes. I think it would fit this uh, fit in here. I went with through the uh, Clifton Fire Station. <coughs> I heard. With. Uh, Chief Altman and who's the chief of Sierville? Chief Miller. Miller and Mayor Beery. Uh, they were just telling me more about the ideas of uh, how to redevelop that space for training. Uh, and I had a couple back and forths with Brandon Huddleston, Huddleston of the uh, County administrator about uh, asking them for money to help fixing that up, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure you know, what next steps should we be taking. Uh, you know, they're ready to accept of, not accept. They're ready to receive formal application for money. Uh, Mayor Beery said they were going to try to get a couple more estimates. Yeah, I think he wanted to try to get another estimate, and he was going to put together an initial uh, grant request, I guess, on behalf of the builder, since the builder mm -hmm. is, is a request for <coughs> Cedarville Township and Lime Township for supported part yeah. of this. Just to repeat, we have a 99-year lease on part of the building, but it belongs to the village. And it was only about 12 years or 13 years left on the lease. Well, I thought it was 47 years. I've never actually seen the lease. So. I think we do have a copy of it. I think I have a copy on file, but I thought it was over in 37. But who knows? <laughs> But there, there no, we're not applying for any particular category of money, so there's, there's, there's no public deadline or uh, that kind of thing. And materials costs are dropping, thank God. Which is nice. And then I think the quote that the village received in the, the initial, first quote, the quote, uh, it's probably higher than it needs to be. As, as right, the quote was on in the order of 150,000. A lot of that is labor we can provide, mm -hmm. uh, but not for electricity or plumbing. Rough construction. And I think that was kind of the, they tossed stuff in like a epoxy coat on the bay floor. Uh, mm -hmm. Chief Miller and I did requests, but mm -hmm. the things you put in a quote just to see. So. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where it goes. Hopefully it'll work. I mean, it seems like an ideal <coughs> proposal. You know, three communities working together to repurpose the space. Mm -hmm. It meets the current, you know, the governor's current desire to help fire departments. Mm -hmm. Green County's sitting on a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect storm, which was only us getting done. <laughs> but, you know, hey. Huddleston uh, brought up two things. One was, what about Calamityville? <clears throat> um, and uh, 
column explain, and then I went and looked at some of the different references about that. But, uh, their training, that's, this is in Fairborn, is uh, more for extreme events, and most of the folks that use it are <coughs> military, but that doesn't mean we couldn't at some point benefit, that it's not the more routine residential right. Uh, you know, breaking into a window or searching a room for a body or that kind of thing is not what they do. Uh, the other thing he brought up was who else might be using this? Other other townships? How how widely would this be of interest? So that yeah. that to him would be a key. Although he's not the one who decides, it's the county commissioner. Yeah. So we need to think of uh, how much would we be using it weekly, monthly, and so how much we use it would uh, affect how much it would be available to others. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot to figure out. Um, to see what that and figure out what kind of rental and that kind of stuff we want to do. You know, kind of materials and wear and tear and all that. But I, I think it's a great idea. It, it's a simple space mm -hmm. and it's a creative use. It definitely is. So we to go step one with an application. <coughs> yep. Um, plan. Okay. Anything else? Um, I just wanted to commend you and or staff for uh, putting out those little blurbs on the local Facebook thing about the weather and the be careful with this that I think they're very I think they're very well done. Okay. <coughs> Timely, so who's <coughs> ever doing them? Thank you. George, that's you. No. Yes, okay. George, good work. <laughs> uh -huh. Chris, you're doing it? Okay. Well they're getting done somewhere. Uh, I mean, the oh I see. Okay. Well, thank you, social media. You're welcome. And you know, there's another social media friend that you can yes. talk with. I spoke with um, Denny this week about social media. our website and the hospital social media. Okay. Well, I intend to follow that up later in the program. Um, anything else for the fire department? <coughs> can I back up just for a sec before I forget this? Back up to uh, paying of accounts. I know you've gone through this um, column, but Could I miss? the Amazon, all those things that they bought that were all included sales tax, and I know Amazon will. Why he? Ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let me start over. So those are things he bought on his own credit card for us, uh -huh. um, because I I try not to buy anything. Department-wise on Amazon because it's tax, and right? Get tax exempt, so he knows that he's not getting reimbursed for the taxes, the sales tax. So, in, if my math was correct, I just went through and did all the pre-tax mm -hmm. totals. I just, you know, well, obviously, then you guys are on the same page. You know, I hate to see somebody have to pay that out of pocket uh, if if it could be obtained, you know, anywhere else that we could do a yeah. tax exempt. And I know you can get a tax exemption steps on Amazon, and it takes six months and an arm and a leg to get it done. But anyway, so yeah, we typically don't buy from Amazon just because it is such a yeah. That's what I thought. Pain. Um, yeah, I was just surprised to see all these guys. Yeah. Like, I think it was just he was looking for certain things he needed mm -hmm. quickly, and actually there's <laughs> the machetes. I wish <laughs> it's something we've talked about for years. Just as searching the jungle of the park at times, it's nice. He got a really good price for Amazon than other places. Like I know machetes are friends and machete and yeah. for Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> if you need anything machete, let us know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> They're pretty serious too. <laughs> Don, you keep talking about the honeysuckle on, on uh, Brian Park, man. A machete might do it. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we have it. We're a boom mower. <laughs> we have one of those. Super perfect. Yeah. Machetes and a boom mower. 
All right, let's move to uh, staff recognition. Speaking of which, Georgia, thanks for coming to the meeting. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm very glad you're here. Would you mind just briefly telling us a little about your background, uh, what, you know, what your long-range plans are, how much you enjoy being here, that sort of thing? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I uh, got into EMS a little bit later than most people did. I didn't go back to school until I was 30. After that, I graduated from UD when I was 21. I was unsatisfied with my career, so I went back to school at 30. Got my EMT, started here as a volunteer. Um, I have a lot of. This was your first <coughs> experience? Mm -hmm. Really? I have a lot of friends who I consider family in the village. They referred me to this department that I was going to work for with people. So I started out as a volunteer and I worked at some other places um, for pay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved on to part time status after I got my fire card and then um, I just finished my medical. Yeah, congratulations on are you currently living in the village? No, I live in Dayton. Uh -huh. In uh, the Beaumont neighborhood. Mm -hmm. okay. right. That's a nice little neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, is your family from there? I have family in uh, Beaver Creek, Do you? Riverside. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, over Air Force. Mm -hmm. So almost every one of my family works somehow for Red Hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I, other than them, uh, the rest of my family is a little bit. Where do you like to spend free time? <coughs> not, not necessarily in Belmont, but uh, do you have any favorite places that you go? Uh, well, I do love the city of Dayton. Actually, I have a lot of uh, pride for Dayton. I think that they're working very hard to turn themselves around, especially yeah. in the last mm -hmm. seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. The new businesses that I've moved in. Mm -hmm. um, I like the art community a lot and the music community and that's also present here in the village. Mm -hmm. So coffee community. the coffee community. I, I am an added coffee drinker. <laughs> well if we had a club because I have one I have an avid coffee habit also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Don, any questions for Jordan? Uh, just remind me how long you've been with the department, both as a volunteer and professional. Um, I think it'll be four years in October. So, <coughs> um, right. Yeah, so it's not very long. I'm glad you're here. I don't know, you're kind of a senior person at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we're all very glad you're here. Great addition to our to our park. And she's our only woman at the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just actually women. Well, we do. Wow. New volunteer. Many of us. Well, a comment. When I've had conversations with the chief and the assistant chief, they just say you're rock solid. And they one of the best staff. Very kind. And I assume we don't have any man problems in this department. No, I, I actually consider a lot of people I work with to be also good friends besides coworkers. So I like that. Okay, cool. I think we'll let that. No, I, I just wonder what it would like to be in a, a you know, in an all male, almost all male field, and I thought possibly this was one of the more, the least likely places to get any kind of. I would say so, from what I've heard. Yeah. You know, my experience has been very positive here. I've always worked in male-dominated fields. <coughs> so that's of course not Yeah. Well, we're kind of in a lull, if there's such a thing, in, in that department. We've traditionally had more than our share. I mean, we have there, shares. There, <laughs> There are things like that. There have been times. I mean, naturally, there's nine percent of firefighters. Excuse me, firefighters. <laughs> nine percent of firefighters are women, which is um, 
pathetic. 35% uh, of police officers. Are I thought it was that high. So, no, and we're pretty holding. But here, we've been as high as 50%. And we've had, at one point, an assistant chief who was a woman, a captain, several oh. lieutenants. So, uh, it's kind of cyclical. It goes, you know, we thought about getting a van and just kind of doing the old British Navy Shanghai thing. But, you know, we tried that once before, and it didn't work too well. You never know who you're going to get when you just grab someone off the street. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this well, is works well for her. <laughs> your, your words are publicly recorded. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm at the twilight of my career, so I'm like that eccentric guy that they roll out every now and then. <laughs> oh, fire chief. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's always an interesting thing. The diversity in the fire service in general is not a strong suit. There was an old joke that you know, diversity was being Polish. <laughs> um, but, we have tended to be a better department in terms of, of that, but it, it goes in, in cycles, certainly. So. And we're not turning away anyone? Oh, God, ever. <laughs> There's been a few we've turned away in the years. And we're probably for the best, not to, not to serve the public in this capacity. But yes, most people we do take. So. Georgia, would you mind just coming around the table for us, please? We have we not have a little. Back to the camera. Back to the camera. No. Everybody want, wanted to see the people we were talking about. Oh. You know, instead of just behind them. Back like that. Yeah. And there was no real easy way to get you, you know, I guess we could have put you in the, the hot seat, as it were. Okay. Ooh, and then fun. Yeah. No, we might have to try that. Well, we only have one tonight. You yeah. More than a few. Well, when TJ's here, you guys can do that to him. I think that'd be appropriate. I have a second that. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And um, I'm glad you came this evening because there's a lot of people here to see you. And we have a very special going no. away present for you. Well, I'm not going. I'm what? Like, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> going, going, going away this no, evening. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> she's oh. going away. Oh. Is there Sorry. something else you're Leaving the camera. Are they for wine? Just leaving the camera. That's right. Just go away from the camera. Yeah. That's it. It's a GOAD code? GOAD. How old are you, Georgia? Oh, I'm sorry? Can I ask how old you are? 34. Okay, so as oh, long as she knows. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the Cemetery Road report, which we are a little shy on this evening because we have no we have no uh, Cemetery Sexton or who's actually right this minute uh, doing a burial. We have very few oh, 6 p.m. burials, but we have one tonight, and so he's not available. And since he's also our road administrator. That. So, I can add a couple of things that we've um, been inundated with the length of the grass that's out in the township, which is always the case in the end of May, uh, mid May, end of May, early June. Um, unfortunately, it's just worked out that there's been other things that, that came as a priority that they needed to work on. And then Mother Nature didn't help out when there was time to, to attend to some of this uh, grass. So they've got lots of road berms to cut and cemeteries to mow, and um, not cemetery, mm -hmm. cemetery, the Clifton one. That's what Brandon's been doing uh, or today and then we'll be doing over the next two days of cutting. Uh, Roads themselves, um, I went through them all last night. Uh, everything seemed to be fine. Uh, no big potholes, no big trees down, no fences that were broken. There's, uh, for, for this time of year, there's an awful lot of foliage coming, creeping into the roads from the, from the side that we generally will go in and trim with boom mowers later in the year, but I don't know if we're going to be able to wait till later in the year on some of these roads because it's 
it's getting out there uh, and, and uh, covering some, some signs that I need to let Dan know which ones he needs to go out and, and cover. So, um, I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, I go ahead. I had a question. Really, it came sort of circuitously, but we're not responsible for the stop sign at Jacoby Road and it's Route 68, right? No, we're not. That is the <coughs> uh, actually the state, but through the county. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there, last week there was none. Is that right? Mm. No. Someone's picked up trucks, got a new bedliner. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments for roads or cemeteries? No, sir. Um, I guess Riley does. Uh, what, you said some signs were covered. Can you give an example? Which um, ones you observed last night? The, uh, the street sign and stop sign, uh, the one that came to mind on the intersection of Glen Drive and Grinnell Circle is quite difficult to see. Um, and that's a very low traffic uh, count area, so it's, it's not, you know, it's not going to be a real problem until they get out and uncover it a little bit. Um, where the other one was, but I think I wrote it down. Uh, I went out to see Dan this afternoon and, and we talked about some of these, so I may have left that with him. Thank you. Um, oh, cemetery. I wanted to let you know that we are quite close to completing the uh, Oak Grove, completing the phase one of the Oak Grove Cemetery. Which, since we've got a lovely audience, we might have to expound on that just a little bit. We have a third cemetery in our uh, active cemetery for roles, one being the older to traditional Glen Forest Cemetery that's on Cemetery Street, Fairfield Pike, and Route 68. Um, and then across the street, we have the newer uh, Glen Forest Cemetery East, we call it. Uh, which is a <clears throat> relatively large uh, five-acre ad addition, a traditional type of cemetery, um, space for roughly 700 um, uh, interments. Um, we'll also have a new, almost available, columbarium patio that's, uh, that's being made as we speak. There will be two columbariums uh, initially. We have space for five. Uh, if we get to that, each columbarium will have 50 niches in it uh, available to the uh, uh, to the public. Um, price has not been set to 100 percent. Yes, ma'am. Interesting to know how many of the audience know what a columbarium is. Raise your hand if you know what a columbarium is. There's one. There's two. There's one here. Okay. It's it's a uh, um, it's it's a structure. This one will be made of granite. I think they're all pretty much made of granite, and it's seven feet wide and five and a half feet tall and about 30 inches, 32 inches deep. There are what's called niches and they're 12, 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch square, cubic square, one cubic square foot uh, built into these things. And there's 50 on one side and 50 on the other side. Each one has a, a black, granite, what's called a door for, for lack of a better reason, or better uh, explanation. It's not a door because it does not open, but it's, it's removed and, uh, and, and someone's ashes are set into the niche. Oh, <coughs> and then the, the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks sort of like a post office box. <laughs> oh, yes, or safety <laughs> yeah. yeah, but a little bit bigger on the door so you can fit uh, a whole set of ashes in there, which is nice. Um, and then the door itself is sent away to a, an engraver with, with a uh, design of your choice, and the engraver does the door, and then it comes back, and we will, uh, there's a blank door that's put on in the meantime, and then when the 
the finished door comes back, we will switch the two around and put a permanent seal on the, on the, uh, on the enclosure. And, and now we get to uh, keep going here. We have, as everybody hopefully knows, we have a natural burial cemetery to the um, east. east of our uh, Glen Forest Cemetery East. That's why it's called East, uh, by the way. And it, it, it has space for 125 uh, burials. Uh, these are not traditional burials. These are natural burials. This is an area that's planted in prairie grass and wildflowers and lots of other weeds and things. Um, and these graves are relatively large. They're 10 feet wide and 20 feet deep, um, meant to keep kind of a more natural, not a, uh, a crammed in sort of area, which a lot of uh, cemeteries, I think, has that look. But the burials um, are done uh, without any, or with all biodegradable material that goes into the ground, the caskets can't be made with uh, 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 man-made synthetics, and fiberglass caskets, that sort of thing. Uh, not supposed to have either even metal, uh, like metal nails, or there are these caskets available, these natural ones. You don't have to have a casket, you can be buried, and many of our interments are done. They're done just in a shroud, uh, some family, special family garment or blanket or something that they want to have go into the ground with them. Um, obviously, no involvement uh, of the of the uh, of the deceased. Uh, no, no vault, no cement vault that they're covered in either. It just goes down into the ground and then it's it's covered and. Um, relatively smoothed out and it, that's just the way it, it sits and over time and it does not take very long over time it's settled it will settle to a fairly flat uh, surface and the prairie grass will grow back onto the onto the gravesite so all you're left with is a grave marker and in these cases the grave markers are supposed to be and we have trouble with that but they're supposed to be uh, 18 this is not that old, but 18 by 18 by 12, uh, and and about uh, three inches, three inches uh, thickness. It's supposed to be a natural material, a natural stone, not polished like a, a, a gravestone is. We have a difficult time getting that through to people, and we have a more difficult time asking them to come back and take those stones away and buy a new one and come back. That's uh, a struggle. But for the most part, we've had a very good uh, compliance with the, with the request. Um, we have about 50, not quite 50, I think we have about 46 burials uh, in the Natural Burial Cemetery now. As I say, there's room for 125. And then behind that, to the east, going further east, connected to it, uh, but not 100% part of it because it's separated by uh, a, a full stand uh, birch trees is what is going to be called the Oak Grove addition to the Glen Forest Natural Burial Cemetery. And what that is, it's, um, it's five, 5.2 acres of ground, I say again to the east, and it will be and most of it now, or two thirds of it now, is just just flat ground. Uh, part of it's in grass. Part of it is going to be the rest of it's going to be in grass. Eventually, it will all be in grass. And the interesting thing about it, in, in at least my uh, uh, thoughts, and the board agrees with me as so far, is there will be there will be space for 60 grave sites. And uh, initially, and the, those 60 grave sites are laid out uh, in rows. There's going to be three rows, and then there'll be a, a, an entrance um, drive uh, uh, that connects to the Natural Burial Cemetery behind it of approximately 12 feet in gravel and grass and whatever. But that's what we'll get back and forth. There'll be three rows, 
to the left and three rows to the right, and then 10 rows deep. It'll be 60. So there's 30 on one side, 30 on the other side, and in each one of those um, graves will be in a 10 by 10 foot grave site. And in the center of that grave site, the decedent will be, uh, will be buried and at normal depth, but there will be no, uh, no natural casket or anything. They must be buried in there altogether. Not, they don't want to be in their birthday suit, but nothing, nothing covering them, and there's a reason for that. And so then they, they're, they're buried, and then they're, they're covered, and they're mounted and, and flattened out. And then they need to wait a year. And then after a year, when everything is settled, or a lot of things have settled, then a, what's called a swamp white oak tree will be planted right on top of where they are. And that tree will stay there for hopefully the next two or three hundred years. And that person who is buried underneath them uh, certainly is, can have a marker with any designation that they'd like on it that they're part of the natural evolution of this tree or, or the growth or whatever. These aren't little, little teeny trees. These are going to be trees with, with a trunk of about uh, two, two and a half inches, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, not more than three. And I don't know that much about planting trees, but apparently if they get much more than three, they're difficult to, to acute, uh, acclimate themselves into the ground and tend to die off earlier than other ones. So the, the one and a half to two and a half inch range, I guess, is we have our planning uh, professional here. But so then it gets planted, and then it, people uh, go away. Now this 10 foot by 10 foot section, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, there are no uh, full burials allowed in that, in that section, in that area. And the reason is we don't want any potential roots uh, to be d uh, disturbed by digging down the ground. But, you know, after 50 or 75 years or something, there will be uh, some roots that go out from that tree. But the owner of the family can put as many ashes in that 10-foot square as, as they, can, they can potentially fit. And they could have them marked in any way that they see fit. It's their 10-by-10-foot it's their section with a, uh, a swamp white oak tree in it. Uh, and there's 60 of them available. <coughs> Now, after the 60 are sold, and we're not going to sell graves both in the Natural Burial Cemetery, just regular graves, and the new White Oak Cemetery, until most of the Natural Burial Cemetery graves have used up. It, it just seems to be too difficult to go back and forth. But there will be, there will be four standard graves in between every tree, either along the row or between the row. There's room for four, because they're, they're planted um, 60 feet apart, to give a full canopy area for a, for a full-grown white oak tree. And, uh, uh, and that, that 60 feet would allow, uh, if you take the 10 feet off both sides, four uh, 10 by 5 by 10 foot graves in between them on, on every side. And so I don't know how many that works out to be. That's what will be available for more traditional natural burials. Not traditional burials, but traditional burials where it will be the area will be mowed, and there will be allowed vertical headstones if, if, if the person wants, or, or just kind of normal things. But it will be a natural burial also. Um, and I've been waiting for almost a year to get a surveyor to come out and survey to put the stakes where the trees are going to be planted, because we can't really introduce this until I know exactly where these are going to be. So, I've been told, since I've waited about nine months for this, that we're just about ready to have the surveyor come in and, and put, this, put the uh, locations for the trees in, which is great. And I also have a local artist who's making a rendition, a uh, color rendition of what this grove may look like once all 60 trees are in. It gives give the, uh, the person an idea of what it might you know, look like. It's not gonna be real fancy, but you know, it will be a perspective drawing of of the three rows, or the ten rows of three, and the ten rows of three, and so I'm looking forward to that. And we'll use that in uh, introducing the the grave, uh, the new grave side, uh, the graveyard, uh, and 
advertising here's program over there uh, for uh, for people to explore. Price has not been set yet on that either. So you have to do that. Okay, that takes care of that. So where are we going now? Um, any questions about the cemetery or the road? How soon, how soon do you estimate that the natural uh, cemetery will be full enough to start using the uh, oak grove? At the rate we're going, it could be five-ish years. But if, if I wasn't clear, we will start selling the three locations as soon as they're, they're marked out. People can buy those and be buried there. As soon as they're marked out, so that could be as soon as a month from now. But not the not the traditional grave sites. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No, this will predate me. I'd love to see the the plans and the Okay, well and we're working on them. I would uh, uh, there's other things about the natural program, but we'll let's we'll save that for another time. Okay. Does this abut Stony Creek's property? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, it's past Stony Creek. It's back in where uh, Nick the Animal Man has all of his critters. But it is on that same road. Mm -hmm. Am I right that the Stony Creek property is leased from the village? That is correct. The cemetery is adjacent to the village on, on, on both sides, so to speak. It was a section of the sub farm that was sold by the village to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. This doesn't affect the animal um, section, does it? No, except for Nick thought his animals also, his property for his animals also included what is now the new cemetery. And so he's had lambs and ducks and horses back in there for however long he's been there. We've kind of pushed him back a little bit. He's now back on the back third with his animals. The back third has an awful lot of uh, pine trees uh, back there. And so that's going to take a lot of effort to clear that. And I personally am not going to worry about that until we get, you know, get some, get some sales, get some interest, see how that goes in the, in the first two-thirds of it. Okay, let's move on to the ever interesting fiscal officer report. And that would be I have nothing. Oh, wow. I only have a resolution for you all, so cool. I guess we'll uh, move right along. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I ought to back up again to Rose just for one sec. We, I did. Uh, we uh, take delivery, as it were, of our new uh, road truck, a new did. Ford F450, and I made a very hard, a hard attempt to tell this guy that as soon as you got a time to order another one for our, our fire department, please put that in and do not play. Oh, so so you're saying it's like here? It's at like the Tantra Garage? No, it's here. It's here in Ohio. It's here in Vandalia. Okay. Well, not anymore, but it's it went from Vandalia to wherever. Um, We're really gonna finish it up. Yeah. Um, right, because I got an invoice for it, but I thought, well, we haven't got it yet, so I'm not gonna pay yeah. for it. So. Well, it's gonna be a while before. Before I should pay for it. Okay. K Rose, before K Rose finishes putting the bed on and the hydraulics and the snow plow. Should I go ahead and pay? Yes, you need to pay for the cabin chassis. Oh, well. Oh, well, sorry. Okay. And I can do it tonight, right? after that. I did take the invoice, but I didn't think we got the truck, so that's fine. Right. Thank you. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good to know. All right, well, I told him, sure, we, we have a check for you as soon as possible. No problem. All right. I don't think they're hard off, but you yeah. said within 30 days, and I thought, well. We can do that. Okay. All right. Thank you for your uh, time to talk about that. OK, so nothing on the fiscal officers, so that will bring us to the zoning inspector. OK. One of those. Since I last met with you, I've issued three zoning permits, um, one at 
uh, Hill Road um, for an accessory structure for a storage building. Another on Meredith Road. Um, this is also another accessory structure storage building. And the third one on Hilt Road, and this is an addition to the house, a three season room on the, on the back of the house and the deck. Um, I'm also in the process, going back and forth on doing a driveway permit. Eventually there's gonna be a new house um, right, um, what's our road that, that comes off Wilbur Forest Coast? Larkins? Lark, no, the other side. Tobias? Tobias. Yeah, the big Tobias. Mm -hmm. On Tobias Road, it's the, it, it, if you were there, you wouldn't think there was a building lot, right, when you turn on the Tobias Road on, on your left hand mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a, a till field mm -hmm. that has, it was actually sold a while back to a construction company, and then the construction company sold it to an individual mm -hmm. who is looking to build there, and they're on their first step, which is going to down to So that's the, Territory on permits. Don't let um, them mess up our new blacktop road. <laughs> Don't be careful. Don't be careful. But well, this, this is a father and son that are doing the work. I, I learned that. Um, Dan's been out there doing his usual, you know, what size culvert is needed. So he said there seems to be plenty of room. It should be difficult for them to do the work. Um, and, and Dan's aware of that. The um, zoning commission is not met. They didn't meet in May. Mm -hmm. uh, so their next meeting will be the third Tuesday of this month. I met with the regional planning for the zoning inspectors group. Mm -hmm. They had a speaker who talked quite a bit about weed control. And I've always known that there is an official list of noxious weeds in the state of Ohio. Most of that, and this is actually, uh, this list is, is certified by the legislature. I mean, they had to track them. That's done on that level. But th these are mostly weeds that have to do with being noxious to farmers, as opposed to, you know, poison ivy not on the list or something else. But those weeds that, that either you know, are very hard to get rid of, uh, generally on the list of good old Canadian thistle was the one probably most people are familiar with. But um, what was brought out, and which was interesting, is, is making kind of a, a lot of talk about poison hemlock. And I happen to be familiar with poison hemlock for having removed it and, uh, based on people bidding on, on having invasive species removed through the Tecumseh Land Trust auction. And got a bunch of that. But this year, it seems to be everywhere. And it turns out, for example, if right now, if you go south on 68, as soon as you get out of Yellow Springs, you'll see um, poison hemlock in, in large clumps on, on both sides of the road. Yeah. Um, and if any, anybody can actually petition the, like they can petition ODOT to go out and get rid of it if it's in the if it's in the road right of way, mm -hmm. which most of this is. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with doing that is that ODOT will come out and spray it. Mm -hmm. So you have you, 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 to give and take on uh, whether you want those chemicals along there. But the problem is it's one of those plants that puts out it, it looks a little bit like like Queen Anne's lace on steroids. Mm -hmm. So these the, the mature plants are five, six, seven, eight feet tall, and then all these white flowers, just lots and lots and lots of them. So you imagine lots and lots and lots of seeds. So um, getting to them right now, if, if you personally are encountering any of them and don't want more, now's the time. And when they're at this age, just a spade beside them in a little pry, and you can pull them right out of the ground. They're not deeply rooted. And so that's the easiest way to I find to deal with. But anyway, I thought it was interesting that, um, you know, legally you, could, you as an individual could take action if, if any of this is showing up on public property. And if Dan had been here, I'd say, Dan, you may want to, want to check around on our roads just to make sure that we don't, we're not supporting any poison hemlock. It's not poison like poison ivy. Most people don't have any problem touching it, but it's very poisonous to livestock. It's eating. Mm -hmm. That's its, its biggest threat. 
So I thought I'd, I'd mention that, having having learned all, uh, having had that reinforced a little bit recently. Well, I believe we have a fairly decent stock, but in the natural burial cemetery. I was just going to say that I was out there with the orchards yeah. yesterday, and mm -hmm. it was popping up. It's also a biennial, so all those little seeds will just grow little tiny plants close to the ground next year. Mm -hmm. and you won't, you won't, you know, say, oh, well, there's no problem, <laughs> you know. And then the year after that, whoosh, they all, they all shoot up and, and flower and seed. And that's why just mowing it, unless you repeatedly do it, doesn't, doesn't stop it. But that weed stock just wants to keep growing. It's the nature of the plant. Um, that's all I have on the, the regular business end of, of zoning. Okay. Do you want to question before we no. turn it over? Steve, you had something you wanted to bring up? Yeah, I uh, guess just first I'd say I apologize. I had to leave the May 2nd meeting a little early for my daughter's event. So I got the chance to go back and read, or sorry, listen to the YouTube recording of the trustees meeting. And so if I had been there, I'd have had a few comments. Um, I guess in rebuttal or in, in relation to the report that was given by Mr. Zoff on the hearing. So I just wanted to make those couple comments, maybe a couple questions. Um, so a couple areas. Um, so first of all, um, there was comments made about um, BZA members being attacked. That was the exact word being used um, in the May 2nd trustee report. And I personally was there. I know some other people in this room were also at the hearing. Um, I know many of us have tried to get video, um, have not discovered anywhere that that exists. And I understand the audio recording may not exist also, so you guys are at a disadvantage that you only get to read a transcript. I just want to weigh in firmly that there was no attacking going on by anybody in that room. I would say that actually some of the public comments and other hearings might have been slightly more aggressive than this one. Um, I would actually applaud Mr. Silliman for doing a good job of, of hosting and making sure that each person that came up was um, demonstrated to be sworn in and made their comments. What did occur is um, multiple people got up and asked Ms. Kravick to recuse herself. Um, because she made significant comments the week before on Facebook and the YS community forum um, that were probably not appropriate. Um, after that was made, I think, by three people during the meeting, I stepped in and said that my view was that her comments were directed at my editorial about Richard, um, not so much about the shows, although they could be viewed as negatively reflective on the approval of the shows. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, Ms. Kravick, and I was here for the part of the meeting when she apologized you know, on the May 2nd meeting for losing her temper. Personally, I didn't see her lose her temper. What she did do was criticize Mr. Chappelle and his participation in the protest march in the summer of 2020. And for that, another person who was called up and allowed to speak um, said, I don't think you have any right to criticize any black man and um, how they participate in racial equality. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that those comments were out there that I thought it was the most well-run, organized meeting, and I applaud you guys for the outside counsel that you did hire. I thought that that woman did a very, very good job of organizing that meeting and controlling it. Now, I personally didn't sit in the back room, and Mr. Zoff claims that he wasn't allowed to speak. Um, I weighed in. Most of everything I think I've said, or I'm going to say, Richard and I talked about two weeks ago also one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Richard shouldn't have been allowed to participate in the meeting nor speak, personally, in my opinion. He probably shouldn't have been in the room. Um, I can go through all the comments he made to the news outlets the day before, the day of, days prior, and in the past hearings. Um, and they aren't comments that, in my opinion, are in any way appropriate. The problem is anytime you make a comment to media, no matter what you're trying to say, they can be perceived either way. So I'm going to look through it in my lens, he's going to look through it in his lens, and I don't think there's any place for it. So when that occurs with a BZA member or our zoning inspector, which has occurred, I think, in every one of our hearings, um, personally, I don't think they should be allowed in the room. Um, it creates bias out there, um, and I don't know why it would be allowed. Um, my other view, and I guess it's my advice for you three, is when he speaks on behalf of Miami Township, he's speaking on behalf, on behalf of you guys. Um, so he's representing the township, and if that's the way you want the township represented and the opinions you want represented and you're authorizing him to do it, boy, I, I caution you against it. I don't think it makes for a fair hearing. So when I talk about bias and obstructionist, these are the types of things that I continue to point out. Okay. So when you say not allowed in the room, you mean in the, in, the, in, the, in the public part of the room or in the deliberation part of the room? My personal opinion is either one. As an applicant, somebody who's going to quote things in the media for weeks prior to the hearing shouldn't get to participate. 
Well, then, what's your suggestion of how the, the, the township participates in the process for the, for the benefit of the township? I mean, who's the spokesman? Well, simply ask the zoning inspector and the BZA members to not make any public comments prior to. See, the, the issue is, it's, it's a little bit one-sided, right? I'm, I'm the applicant, I'm the public, I can make whatever comments I want, I can put whatever editorial I want in the paper. Mm -hmm. right. When the township employees or the BZA members respond to those publicly, they're speaking on behalf of the township. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, if you kind of look at the Facebook chatter and all the communications that went on around Barbara's comments and Richard's response to my editorial that came out the day of the hearing, with a lot of people going, what is, he, what is he doing? Does he work for the township? Who does he work for? And it gets, it gets perceived as very biased that the township is against this. And, and I've got lots of examples of these quotes and comments and all the news outlets that I can get to you guys later if you want. So my only point is there shouldn't be any problem with any of those people participating in the hearing. That's their jobs and their roles. I just don't know why they need to make public comments on them prior to the hearing. Mm -hmm. You guys want to, you're elected officials. Please, by all means, say what you guys want to say about the shows, the hearings, the process. But the people running it and voting on it when they do, I find completely inappropriate. Well, I personally find it, and I've expressed this to other board members, I find it particularly inappropriate for the board of trustees, for the elected officials, to either comment publicly on it or I. I personally will not attend the hearings because it, it may have the appearance of, uh, uh, of some, you know, some particular side one way or the other, depending on what's going on. So I, yeah. I, will, st I will stay away from the hearings themselves. Yeah. Uh, Richard knows our, our view um, on, you know, I, I, on one side, and, and please weigh in, uh, Marilyn, um, yeah, Don. Now, on one side, I agree with what you're saying. On the other, you know, if someone, you or or anybody, goes public with uh, a line of discussion that may be uh, not neutral, as it were, um, you know, part of me says we need a spokesperson uh, to to speak for the township. Uh, I would personally not do it. I, I would not uh, argue in the in the media, um, uh, one side or the other. But you know, if if we're being you know, castigated for for something, maybe it's a good idea. Don, what do you think? Uh, I don't remember any of the details, but I will say that Richard and I were having a conversation and he said he was going to uh, put something in the paper. When I say detailed, I don't remember what, was, what he was responding to. Well, he was responding to mm -hmm. Steve's uh, letter in the previous week. Or Correct. Um, but I don't remember any of the elements mm -hmm. of what you said or of what Richard said. But I asked if anyone else had looked at what Richard was submitting, and he said no, and I said, well, I'd like to see it. And so Richard emailed it to me, and I read it, and I said, huh, okay. Um, only that when we send, put things on uh, social media without sleeping on it or betting it with somebody else sometimes we do something that the next day we regret uh, but again i don't remember what was in it i just but i participated and, and could i ask don did you read the one pager that he offered to send out inside his editorial that went out to people in the community also no i just read, okay. read what uh, got published in the paper. Okay. Yeah, what do you think well, I did read the one pager that came and um, saw everything on social media. I think it's, we can't be, have, I, I agree we can't be haphazardly commenting on things in social media. I don't know what to do. I would say if there's public criticism, we 
address it in a public forum, uh, um, not in other venues. I don't really see your point. I may not appreciate yet your point of why you feel like we shouldn't be at the meeting. I feel I didn't. I didn't feel any attacks at the meeting. Um, I was actually impressed with the meeting as well, and um, it was kind of warm fuzzy. I thought people were. Um, they, they did address Barbara. I didn't think she lost her temper. I, I, I thought her comment was inappropriate, and I think she realized that and came to us. Um, yeah. And I just want to thought I was going to say. Um, I don't. If I hadn't attended that night, I would have no idea what is going on because apparently the video was erased. Somebody was taking video. It was well, the only video oh, the being audio. taken was from news outlets. Oh, the audio went back to the. Um, the audio was erased. It was on some sort of device, and they assumed we had downloaded it before we returned it, and it um, it disappeared. Mm. You know. Um, I tried reading the transcript. It was a pretty dry read. The meeting wasn't dry, but the transcript was a pretty dry read. I, I'm actually glad I was there because I would have no feel for it at all if I, if I had to. Mm -hmm. And the stories, and then your report at, at the May 2nd meeting, I would have come up away with a completely different impression of, of what had happened. I yeah. thought, I thought, I I've heard that also, but you know everybody's entitled their own. And, um, at the at that meeting, you know things were a little more uh, fresh in people's minds about what went on. Yeah, and I, I would just throw in an offer that, you know, personally as a citizen, I would I would find it great if you guys were there to witness the hearings. Clearly, you don't want to come off as biased and make comments or stand up and offer testimony, but I think especially this hearing in general, I think it's a shame you guys didn't get to watch it, because I, I personally thought it was very inspiring, and there was a lot of input inside village residents and outside you know, as well. So I think there was a lot of good information in there. I can only imagine the transcripts painful to read. Um, but, but regardless, it, it is what it is. I guess, you know, m my point is you guys can make all the comments you want as trustees in a township. I, I think that is appropriate. If you're being attacked and slandered or whatever it is and you guys want to respond publicly, I highly recommend it. The question is who's your spokesman and what you want to say. Yeah. And I think no, that's, I that's you guys' question. And, and you know, you, you recognize that it's a, it's a small operation yep. and, yep. you know, a, a one man or a three person, you know. Yeah. But for, for everybody else, you know, you've got to keep in mind that the Board of Zoning Appeal is basically a quasi-judicial body, and it is completely independent, totally independent from the Board of Trustees. So there's no, no responsibility to the Board. The Board has no control over the, the, the process, the procedure. Um, the only thing we can do is basically appoint the people who are on the board. Uh, there's a method of removing people who are on the board, but you'd have to remove them for really strong reasons, mal malfeasance or, or lack of participation or something. You can't just do it because you don't like what they, you know, how, how, how they did, how, how they spoke. Can I ask you a question as an example? Sure. Well, let me just add. Yeah, please. Uh, Clearly, however, in the appointment process, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, or at least I, I mean, I was involved in, in nominating Barbara. We met and talked about her views of the future of the township, and mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's not a, uh, I mean, I viewed it as a political discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I, I, but yeah, I'm sorry at the time, I, yeah. at the time of a specific uh, decision, mm -hmm. um, yes, it's semi-judicial, and uh, anyway, I, I wouldn't call her and say, "I think you should do such and such." Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> That's exactly what how I feel. 
Marilyn, do you have a comment? Um, Steve, is that a system? No, I, I mean, I guess the question I'd pose to you is I sat in the agrarian hearing. I sat six, six feet away from, from Ms. Parsons. Now, I don't know Ms. Parsons at all. I only know her through the hearings. I can tell you that every first impression you get is one of the most combative persons that you've met in a long time. And I sat six feet away from her after Josue Salomaran gave a, his public testimony when she turned to the side and she said, you're full of shit. So is that the behavior where you'd remove a trustee, or is that an attack? Uh, this is the point around the bias that I keep trying to make to you guys. I've tried to copy you on testimony so you can sort of, or emails and all that stuff so you can make your own opinions, because I think I'm getting exhausted with this biased approach. But if I literally go back from July of 2020 and summarize all the way through and look at all the, the prep comments made to the BZA and the comments in the news articles, I don't know how you possibly conclude that there isn't bias going on, and whether it's specific to these hearings, the ones that I participated in, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Further to that, you know, I'll use the example of BZA and Poitiers. So you guys appointed somebody new two weeks ago. Right? In the May 2nd meeting, um, I watched the meeting, you guys reported that Ms. Parsons had resigned, and you reported that you were going to post it and search for additional people that wanted to be BZA members. Did that occur? Did it get posted? Did you have a pool of people that you looked at? I had three or four that were wanted to be part of the BZA, people that live out in the township, the reason why I'm asking the question. I was waiting to see the posting. When I followed up and asked, I was told, ah, oh, now somebody was appointed already. Uh, your point is well taken. We didn't follow the process. That okay. do, the other hand is sometimes it's hard to find people I, to do it. I bet. Yeah, the, the, Amy sort I of bet. appeared and we said, do, cool. Do, do you know Amy? Well, yeah. Do you know her past? Do you know her input on our hearings? Have you read her public testimony? There's been a public testimony. Huh? Public testimony. On all of the prior hearings to do with the Weirig Pavilion property. Have you read her public testimony? And have you read the personal correspondence between me and her? So my, my point is this. Between you and Amy? Yeah. Amy would text me frequently. So my only point is, that's all okay, I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. that. That was part of the neighborhood feedback that I was asking for. My only point is that if it has to do with my property in future, we will adamantly request that she recuses herself from any further process. There's enough statements like, I don't want we're doing anything on that pavilion property. I wouldn't have moved here if I had known he was going to have that. Those are not my, those are not my statements. I, I kept the emails. Okay. All I have to say, I, I have, Responded. I responded to the noise, yep. and I let you know. Not every time, but when the the times when the noise was very excessive, then I let you know in accordance with what was decided by the BZA and mm -hmm. what you agreed mm -hmm. with. You asked. Yep. In fact, I have. I, I agree I have with you. Your email that said. Please, please give me input. Please give me input. Yeah, I agree with that. And I have not texted you since the last time I said something about the noise, which was not during one of those shows, but something else you were doing out there. It was a party, it's a graduation party, I found out. It's prom. Well, yeah, it was something like that. It was yeah, something, prom. To, something to do with the high school, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I texted you and said, alas, we were hoping to sleep with our windows open tonight, but I guess that's not going to be, which I thought was polite and I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was very light. And you texted me back and said, please don't text me again. Yes, correct. So I have not texted you again. Okay. I, I'm not. Um, I know. just want to be sure that I did request that input. I appreciated your input. Um, you're not sounding like that because no, you're, you're, no, 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 no. you're saying things that are false, I believe. No, no, no. You're quoting, I can go back and I have the emails. I will go back and look at the emails and see if I said something like that. But in my recollection, all I have done is let you know when the noise was bothering okay. us, and only when it was excessive, okay. and made suggestions okay. about maybe how to reduce the noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you know, I thought it was a, a polite exchange mm -hmm. that we had. I'm not making any comments on that. I, I'm sorry you took it, taken it that way. I'm not, I'm not saying you're impolite. Um, I'm not trying to make any comments about what your input was. What I'm saying is, if you put somebody onto the BZA that has this history with me directly and in public input, I'm not, it's, it's nothing bad. It's simply that we will ask that you recuse for future hearings that have to do with our property. But well, that's a, in, a, in a small town, there's a lot of background. Uh, you're, going to get, you're going to get people who know people, who are related to people, who either live next to people yep. or, or have 
I've dealt with them, or you know, you can't recuse yourself for absolutely everything. Well, certainly you can for for some major reason, but you know, you can't just you know because you live next door or you dated the guy you know down the street. Plus, plus it's I know. Know. Okay, well, okay. We're, gonna, we're gonna stop this conversation yeah, this now because we have other things that we need to get on the agenda. I, I, I think I you to have. Say okay. Um, our, the process for, and I, I, I recognize that it, we've been a sleepy little township for a lot of years and we could almost not get people to serve on these voluntary commissions. I don't think we're in that time anymore. At the May 2nd, I don't think we committed to um, posting it. I said, oh, we should be posting it. And, and Richard said, well, I know somebody who's been, who, who has inquired. And, um, and I, and I suggested, made other suggestions, and I thought Richard was a little discouraging. Well, your problem, I doubt if you'll get any any requests. Um, and that's throughout the, the, the township business, whether it be um, saying like, oh, we're going to have a hearing on some updated zoning code. We should be posting this. We should get it to the website. Well, you're going to find that there's not much interest. Um, it should be on the website. Well, nobody will find the website and, and things like that. So I think I think that's a part of a larger problem that that is being worked on. My plans for the uh, that we'll probably talk about about the website is our page on the zoning commission and the BZA should say what we do, what our responsibilities are, um, what you should do if you want to be on that commission. It should all it should already be in place. Um, many zoning commissions and BZAs have even alternates, and that may seem funny because you, I know you've worked hard just getting people on there. Or, but there's this thing: they don't really care. Well, they don't really know. You know, if, if we don't if we don't put things out there, how does the public know the opportunities there? Like, if someone might have heard that Linda Parsons designed, they, they, if they went to look for it, how do you get on this commission? What does this commission do? What were the responsibilities? They wouldn't find it. So we got we got someone because you know word of mouth, and we're past the times I think of word of mouth. I, I didn't know that somebody had. I didn't know there was an opening when I oh, yeah. sent you my interest. I was not aware yeah. of that. Yeah, Richard, it was Richard just, just mentioned. It was just incredible. After the fact, he said somebody somebody inquired, and. Um, I even beat the bushes a little bit and went to some people in the community saying we have an opening, um, and um, I said we'll send. You know, I said they'll send a letter to the township web page, but it, that's not a, that's not a procedure to say. You know, if you know anybody, send have them send a have them have send an email. That's, so I just want to recognize that to, to fill that in the, to fill in the picture the procedure the procedures to fill in the picture a little bit. In the past, we have worked diligently to try and fill these positions. I personally have written a letter to every household in the unincorporated area telling them that, you know, we had openings, you know, would they please consider, you know, and I, I had one response to like 700 letters that I, yeah. that I, that I sent out. We've also advertised in the Yellow Springs News, ah, they come back, come back. We've all advertised multiple times in, in the Dell Springs News. You know, the, the same kinds of display ads that you see for planning commissions and, and all the rest of that stuff. And, and generally, zero. Not one expressed interest. I mean, virtually everyone who's on these boards is, is a personal contact between a member of the board of trustees and that person. Uh, it, it's only been relatively recently as, uh, that with, with Maybe anyway, you know, that, that someone has actually come forward and said they had an interest. So all this business about posting it and advertising it, well, you ought to be, you know, you know spread this far and wide. It gets spread far and wide, and it just, you know, generally doesn't get doesn't get addressed that. Uh, that although, what, on the web, what she's saying is that maybe times have changed. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. sure. And yeah. I'm not talking about advertising. I'm saying if we have a website. You should be able to go there and find out what they do and how, how you could be a part of it. So that, that's all I'm saying. I was just acknowledging that the process is... Get a count of the account, C-O-U-N-T, not A-C-C. 
get a count of the number of people who visit our website on a, on a particular basis, uh, uh, monthly or weekly, or whatever. It's virtually non-existent. I mean, well, there's, there's not a lot of new information right. that's useful well, I understand, on it. But there, there never has been much. much I'd be glad to use it. Um, anyway, we're going to move on. Could I, could I, uh, I have one more question? That's okay. Not on the hearing. Briefly. Yep. Okay. Um, maybe it's to clear the record. I don't know. Maybe it's a question. Um, in the May 2nd meeting, it was reported that the Zoning Commission met in March 15th, unanimously voted and approved to eliminate sections 1851 and 1852, which mm -hmm. are the sections that we have used mm -hmm. and by Richard's report were the only one in 20 years that, mm -hmm. have, that have met. Um, my understanding is that's uh, just all part of a general cleanup over the code. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had forwarded you, it was then reported also by Richard that his part in that discussion was that he took it upon himself to research other township codes in the county and reported to them um, and to you that there was nothing else like that in anybody else's code. Mm -hmm. So then I had forwarded you guys a summary of the 12 codes and the nine that had similar provisions. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just curious, I didn't get any reaction from you guys. It would just be helpful to me to know first, did you find those similar and, uh, and pertinent to the elimination of 1851 or 1852? I generally do not take an active role in, um, in making changes to the zone code. Or but, but you approve them, right? Yes, Eventually. and at some point yeah. that will come before us. Got it. And we, we and will it consider it. It hasn't reached us yet. Yes. Yeah, now, and I get that. I, I somehow thought maybe between the land use plan and your vision for the township, you guide people what to work on for the seven months prior to it coming to you. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And so I just didn't, I didn't no, know we, how that worked. Uh, so. I, I don't feel like we, have you been guiding anybody, Marilyn, uh, on the zoning commission? No. Uh, okay, I'm just, just checking. No, he, he was suggesting that that would be something we'd want to do. Yeah. Well, it, I guess the question was, have you been doing it in the past? Um, the, the one last thing about that, and I did ask uh, the council that we, we had from Columbus that question, that specific question, and her response was, there's no problem with that. You know, it doesn't look inappropriate. I mean, zoning commissions are constantly reviewing mm -hmm. you know, their codes, and, and if they had to stop you know, when something had come up, then nothing, you know, a lot of things would never get done. So she had no problem with them, um, them doing that. So yeah, I, I was just trying to figure out sort of the impetus for the discussion in the first place because it had never been used in 20 years. It's only been used four times from us. It's been approved four times. And then, and then I'm told it's onerous, unclear, and a problem and is being eliminated. And so those don't compute to me. I was well, just trying to figure it out. I'll go to the zoning, zoning commission. commission if it gets to that point, the zoning commission will have their own public hearing, uh, and you can make you can ask that question of them at the time. Okay, great. Well, for the record, I, I uh, attempted on May 9th to put another editorial in the paper to bring light to this, just mm -hmm. to get the public ready to to be ready to view it when it did come up. Um, that was May Monday, May 9th. On Monday, May 10th, I received a response from Cheryl Durgens at YS News that said that she reached out to the township, and the township said there absolutely was no vote on that matter confused me, so I read the minutes, re-looked at the video. Um, we she, did, I think we... She reached out to the Zoning Commission because she didn't reach no, out. No, she reached out to Richard. Richard said oh, there was Richard. no unanimous vote. Subsequent, I think he's realized his mistake and corrected it with me, I think. I don't know if he corrected it with the YS News because they wouldn't put my editorial in because they said I was making misleading statements. Mm -hmm. Or not, not saying I was making, but they were saying this isn't correct. Okay. So I assume the minutes are correct, though, from the Zoning Commission. That, that Mr. Zoff led the discussion for an hour on the elimination of that clause, and they unanimously voted to eliminate it, then subject to public input. Is that, is I that your understanding? Main, I haven't seen the main minutes. Uh, they probably haven't been approved because they didn't well, this meet. Was, this in was back in eight, March 15th. March, yeah. yeah. I think those minutes have been approved. Okay. Were they correct? To your knowledge? As far as, far as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, we are going to move along. Uh, our very friends yes, hi. <laughs> have, uh, have patiently waited. Yes, sure. Please. Um, well, I didn't know typically the format of this space, so I wasn't sure what to prepare for. My name is Alex Klug. I am the communication, or I'm sorry, the uh, previous land director moving into the outreach director position. Um, I brought a few uh, maps just to go over a little bit about what I just wanted to quickly talk about. Um, 
And really the reason I wanted to come here today and Susan was going to join me is actually to kind of uncover a little bit of what it sounds like some of these same conversations are focusing around. So I understand that the trustees and the VZA are two separate entities, so I don't mean to confuse those two things, but talking about sort of the criticism and communication that we see happen um, with an organization like Agraria. I won't bore the group. I know it's uh, getting late on what we do, so I did bring some journals and I'm happy to answer any questions. But Briefly, I just wanted to go over a few of the projects that we have this year, so I don't know if folks want to yeah, take a look at any of these. Um, and um, so I just quickly wanted to go over a little bit about what we're doing this year. Um, it's sort of what my role is, so it's really I'm here just to introduce myself to everybody, um, make myself available for any conversations, questions, concerns that people have. Not to put Gary on the spot, but Mr. Shorter's been incredibly uh, receptive to just us communicating better, and so my new position is really talking to the community, talking to neighbors, talking to people as they have concerns brought up, and certainly talking to the so again, I don't want to take up a ton of time, but I just wanted to be very transparent about what we're doing and what we're planning to do this year. Um, so I can quickly go through this lovely map with anybody who's interested, and then I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. Um, really what we're looking at right now at TNC is the Nature Conservancy. They'll be coming in and doing a um, 60-acre restoration project on Jacoby Creek, so that's a main waterway for Xenia. Uh, it's a really important project, obviously, for the area, so we're doing habitat restoration, and they're re-channel, or re-meandering that creek to where it wants to go. It was historically channelized. Um, agriculture, 100 years ago, would do that, where they thought they could control water, and they certainly can't. So we've got some hydrological engineers coming out, and they've found out where that water wants to go, and they're going to move the earth to um, figure that out. So we're letting everybody know this. I invited a lot of our neighbors tonight so they could hear about this project, um, I can answer any questions. And then those two pastures, the north and the south, we'll be putting in some fencing, um, have communicated that to our neighbors as well. So we're looking at doing that a little later this season. Most of that's actually been put on hold after we heard from some neighbors and had some meetings in this room even around some of those challenges. So we've asked for now that all of the projects, these big projects other than TNC, be put on hold until we can really make sure that our neighbors' concerns are being addressed. Um, a big part of our history, the kind of work we're doing in this area, really is to look at community development, bringing people together. So one thing we don't want to do is be divisive and uh, not communicate that information. So again, pasture, I assumed I don't have to explain. We're just going to be grazing animals out there, uh, starting with a few goats, maybe some chickens. Um, plantings are already in the ground, so there's a lot of nice forage. And then um, looking at our front campus, mostly education, I think most people in the room have recalled from last year some of the conversations around building use and what we do with our educational spaces. So that area is mostly just um, uh, clearing of honeysuckle and then we're building a natural playground for kids so they actually come out and build that themselves. They collect a lot of bones and have a bone museum. It's a really fun space. I encourage you all to come out and visit it. And then moving down to that um, bottom left corner on the west side of our property, our Houston Road campus is one that we're really, we put on hold almost entirely to address some concerns. And so I think that that's something I'd really like to um, speak with you, Richard, about here soon and looking at some of those compost ideas. We have invited all of the adjacent property owners to a meeting here soon. We've actually completely reworked the site plan we had for that just to address some people's needs. Um, I think that's pretty significant because my understanding is we don't have to do all of these things as we are as end agricultural, but again, it's really important to us that we are here in the community doing good work and addressing everyone's concerns. So just looking at that, um, that area in particular is a production site, so we do have a high tunnel season extension for agricultural production. We are growing crops in there for a few underserved communities in Dayton, so that goes both to South Springfield and the Edgemont Group in Dayton. Um, we are doing a beginning farmer uh, training program, so it's focused on BIPOC farmers um, and women, so people of color and women who historically have not had access to land or equipment. We bring them out, train them on all of these great things, and we pay them, which is a really nice um, incentive. A lot of farmer training programs, it takes up a lot of your time, and it's not a well-paid position, so for us to be able to provide a stipend is really impactful for a lot of these people. 
And then that's also where that class two compost facility that we've um, discussed putting in is slated to go. Our contractor has been waiting for us to move forward on this and we keep asking him to hold off because we just wanna make sure that we um, are good to go and all the neighbors are aware of what's happening out there. Um, my current goal for the next month is to make sure I can get as much information out to the community as possible. We've put some kind of wild ideas around us bringing dead animals and stuff on site, which has never been or will it be the case. Uh, I have no interest in processing dead animals myself, so um, really just looking at food scraps and some yard waste there. And to my knowledge, um, with the EPA Health Department and everyone else we've checked in with, we are doing everything according to how we should. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of what this year looks like, and that's in a nutshell pretty much it. And happy to stick around and answer any questions. For the compost is going to the Houston, is played for the Houston Road Yes, campus. it is. Uh, it is less than a half acre facility. Um, I've actually trying to not use that word. It sounds a little more industrial than it is, so it's really a composting center. As everything else we do at Agraria, it's really for demonstration and education. So we have a PBL at Mills Long with some of the sixth grade students. Um, just really teaching kids. I grew up in the age of learning how to recycle in the school district and brought that education home to my parents. We're doing something, something similar with composting, so um, kids can learn about, you know, what is compostable, what is not encourage you to do it at home but if you don't have the space or if you're not interested what we're exploring is if we can do a partnership with the village or really operate a, a small scale center and then show other communities how they can do that too um, and unfortunately we've been looking at you know where else could that go on our property because of epa and uh, water regulations it, it has to be 500 feet off of a waterway so that unfortunately is the only place we can sell it Yeah. Uh, I forget his last name, Jimmy, who? King Solver, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I know you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but he, he said at one point, uh, Nature Conservancy equipment mm -hmm. crossed over into his area. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he made a point of telling me that, he said, Everyone was nice about it, it was okay, it was a mistake, yeah. but, you know, the bells ring. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that's a big part, again, of why I wanted to come tonight. I know this feels like, what is the context, why is she here? Um, <laughs> which, you know, I feel that too. Uh, but but it's really important, again, and so we've actually, Agraria really is serious about being transparent and, and taking these things seriously. We are here to try to do good work in the community and provide education and take care of our planet and our community as best we can. So a big piece of that is the social aspect. How are we talking to people? So Agraria thought it worthwhile enough to create a whole job for it. And so I hope to see more of you soon. But yes, Mr. King Solver and I, um, I, I have regular communication, I'd say, with all the two of our neighbors at this point. Um, and mostly because those two folks don't have interest in talking to us, which is totally fine. Um, I was on the phone with Jimmy just minutes before I came here, asked him to come to people on the board. Um, and then I'm on the Solid Waste District Policy Committee, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the uh, they prospect of the compost center mm -hmm. and that uh, there's a demand I mean this may not be a good location for high volume of trucks but somewhere in this county or maybe six places in this county uh, I'm making up the number six we need more of the places where restaurants can send their stuff or where not, not so much yes households have have stuff to compost, but where you have concentration of uh, things just being thrown out that could be useful uh, fertilizer in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have anyone processing it. There's near South Charleston, there's one, and that's it. Yeah, yeah I appreciate uh, that comment actually, and I hope that 
uh, this can be recorded somewhere. Um, we, there are no trucks going in and out. It's not open to the public. We are not running this as a business. Um, so we have two personal pickup trucks that we pick waste up from. My goal is to keep this super small. You know, it really is a demonstration so other places can look at what does this look like and then they can scale it up from there. You know, we want to teach people how to even turn compost, what can you put inside of it. So we're not doing this. Um, I, I mean, you can see our property, it's not huge. We're not doing this to operate on a large scale at all, nor could we, even our license doesn't allow it. So looking at doing it super small, um, we've talked to some neighbors on this end of the property around, you know, would you like to see gates? Would you like to see fencing put up? Um, what would make them comfortable? Right now it looks like tree lines mostly, but yeah, never have we planned work, nor do we want to have just, you know, anybody pulling in their vehicle to dump stuff there. That would be a disaster for us to manage. So it's really um, only things that we pick up um, through people that we're currently working with or plan to work with. You might have some kind of workshop for potential entrepreneurs come that's copy exactly, us. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing we're looking at. So with our farmer it's, it's needed. Yeah, with our farmer training, that's what we do. You know, we bring people on site, kids and adults, to talk about, you know, how could this become a livelihood for you? How can you actually do make money off of small vegetable production, off of elderberry syrup? You know, these things that getting past the point of homesteading and actually getting into sustainable, resilient living in the culture of climate change um, are things that I think a lot of people want to learn. And the same with compost. It's it's a resource that we need. Chemical fertilizers are only destroying the earth and in fact contributing to noxious weeds on our lands. And so I'd encourage people to not spray chemicals as much as possible. Learn how to listen to your weeds, learn what they're telling you, and mitigate that in a, in a natural and organic way. Richard, do you have any comment? Mm, not at this point, no. Okay. And so this would, I, I see this as fitting in with your educational mission. You would you consider agricultural process or an educational process or both? I think both. So again, for me, a big piece is that training program. How do you even know what compost is? Do you know what to put in it? Um, I mess up my recycling all the time still. So, you know, these are behavior, I know, right? Behavioral changes that we really do need to take seriously in people's lives. Um, for yeah, for the compost specifically, I mean, I think that there's a lot of opportunity we have here. The reason why I'm encouraging Agraria and have requested that we hold off on building it is that it's an expensive place to build. You know, it's going to cost a lot of money for us to, to develop the site, to buy the equipment to do it. And I want to ensure before I take that step that everybody who needs to hear about this first has heard about it and we have the green light. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. So which comes first, the green light or the investment? Is that, is that a concern? Well, we got the green light, we understood from a number of people, but then, you know, just again coming back to criticism in the community, I suppose I'd say. We want to make sure that we are being forthcoming with all of our projects so everybody has an opportunity to learn about them. Object if they have an objection and then we can respond to it. So we, we've got, I mean, we're ready to build it at this point. We're just waiting on a few, a few neighbors to um, give us a second look. So in our part of the process, yeah. I guess I don't understand enough. Do we, do we approve? Do we approve it? They they do it. And Not yeah. And the, the and then we don't respond unless it's an objection. Well, to my understanding, I'm sure you it's all can answer that better. Yeah, it's, it was me. About, I mean, no, the, any of these. You know, whether you're having a composting facility or, or, or classes for sixth graders, we don't approve those individual activities, but we, have, we are responsible for seeing are they appropriate uses of the land within our zone. I realize that, but the, the timing, I mean, I just, yeah. I hear you saying, well, we're going ahead. I hope it's going to. And so for me, I think that's where the, it, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm just, the, I'm the, just the composting mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. actually started a long time ago. We had people coming here to us with with the proposal that they were going to the state to get the uh, licensing and everything else. And, and did we have anything to say about that? And, and no, we don't have anything to do with you going and getting a license. Right? But then 
Alex and I talked about it and said, you know, that this facility in terms of zoning depends on whether you consider it an agricultural facility or some, something else. For example, we had the methane digester in that township, which started out agricultural, it was using pig waste, and then it kind of grew like topsy. And, but it was compost. It was taking refuse products and, and converting them into something more useful. All right? and, and so what, what we, the conclusion we came to was, as long as you can do all the compost that you want, you're, you're buying fertilizer for your farm. Okay? It's when you start selling the product that then we have to decide whether that's an agricultural product or not. But the scale of this operation is as a vision now. Agraria could use up every ounce of the compost that's, that's generated, and that doesn't seem to be a problem with, with my interpretation of the state of Ohio's rules for agriculture. So that's where it stands, if we're talking specifically about the composting facility. There were, I heard some issues about the state license you know, you said that there has to be a certain distance from the waterways, there has to be certain distances from, from I guess, neighboring, from residences or whatever, all those rules. But that's the state's rules, not ours, that we enforce. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and we have checked with the EPA, both the local and state office and health department, and everybody's happy to uh, see this happen. Um, so I appreciate that. And I just, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that this group heard about the plan, knew, knew what we were discussing. And, and then I also have a question as far as the zoning code itself. Um, at times it can't, I know, it can be difficult to understand, you know, especially for somebody who's not of this background. Um, so my first question is, is the most updated version accessible online? Yes. yes. Um, and then we can all has, say that with some assurance okay, at this point. Right. <laughs> It, except for there's only one thing that's been niggling yeah. around in my head. The, what originally came up at the hearing that made us wonder if it was the right one was the, the woman came up and said, well, why are, yeah. why are um, what are they called, places where guys go to play golf? Uh, country clubs. Country, club. country yeah. Why are country clubs um, allowed in the, the, the township, but the, the weddings wouldn't be? And you oh. said, oh, no, no country clubs aren't allowed. And that's what brought it up in the first place. No, it's, it's okay, it's a little more complicated. Yeah. The word country club, I'm not sure if that's used in the code or not. It is in the current one that's up there, that's, which yeah. just made me like, I believe you guys, it's the latest one, but. Yeah, no, it's what's, as we said, yeah, what, yeah. Ours, to the best of my knowledge, what is on the website now is the up-to-date code. It yeah. has been fully updated on the, on the website. To talk about the specifics of the wording of any section of code, I've got to have it in front of me. Yeah. I don't have it memorized. Yeah. And I, I, I don't need to hear that tonight, but I just it just made me think. Is, is it, but all of them. Maybe some again, mistake. It's, You're always allowed at country clubs. I don't know. Maybe it's, it, we're it's, not allowed to not have it. It's my job to read that code, all right, and issue permits or not based on what I read. If I don't feel comfortable interpreting what's there, then the BZA does that interpretation. And I don't write the code, okay? I just have to work with what's on those pages. And yes. they may be contradictory in, in somebody's mind, and they may not be. That's, right. um, I think the point is it was only until recently that the most up-to-date version get posted on the website. It yeah, wasn't there, always. There were, complications there were old ones on there last year. So I don't know when a career pulled those, but. Well, I do look at the website. Yeah. Um, and and so I'm happy to, to know go over it any time that you want. Right. And that was my next question, because when something's open to an interpretation that's not clearly defined, it does, especially when I'm talking about building something that costs upwards of $20,000, it does make me a little nervous that yeah. I could yeah. be If any time you're going to build mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you need to find out what you need a permit for. it. Right, which we've done. Yeah. So okay. earth moving, it's not building. It's no, the earth building moving earth doesn't move. doesn't require a permit. The working in the floodplain requires a permit. That's issued by Green County, not by by Miami right. County, yes. for example. So it's when we say earth moving, and I say, all right, in terms of my code, 
well, except, you know, other, there are other regulations on that. So don't, don't assume that because Miami Township says you can, somebody else doesn't say you, says you can. Right. No, I think everybody else has said we can. So this yeah. was, this sounds good then. Anything else, Alex? No, thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thanks for the information. The booklets you have are those from last the, fall? Yes, so I'm sure most folks have also get plenty of our little journals in the mail or as we hand them out. These are this past winter and we're getting ready to put our new one out. But I'm happy to hand these out if anybody would love to read any of that. Well, I didn't personally memorize it, so I'll give you another copy. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Going to move along to various things. Uh, the first, Margaret, for you, under items 10, would you please add uh, one Ohio Foundation board to those lines? Sure. Thank you. And secondly, I'm confused. Um, on, on revenue status fund 2281, miscellaneous other operating businesses, fire, rescue, ambulance, and EMS fund, there's a there's a revenue of seventeen thousand six hundred ten dollars and sixty cents. I don't have that report. Okay. 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 No. Uh huh. Any idea what that is? Yeah. Okay. I can't remember right now, but I know it's legit. Okay. <laughs> I, I there is a reason for that. It's um, I have to ask. Oh, I, 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 there's a reason. Okay. Yeah, there is really. Right. Well, when you get yeah. a spare moment. No, yeah, it's not hard to figure out. I just, just can't kind of fill in all the right, right now. But no, that's that is legit. Thank you very much. I remember much. Colin gave it to me. Okay. Uh, next thing was Marilyn. I wanted to ask if. If you went to the most recent MBRPC meeting, how did you like it? I didn't go. Okay, well, that answers that. That's an easy Okay. Um, oh, back, Marilyn. Uh, is there anything, considering the lateness of the evening, that you'd like to say about your work on the new website design? Yeah, I mean, Deb Slater are going to sit down on Thursday and. Um, had a long meeting with the assistant fire chief, who's also a, a techie kind of guy. So, mm -hmm. And he's been around a while, so we, we went through the whole website and yeah. made a list. And we're going to judge um, Deborah's interest in if she wants to move forward with us or if she is ready, as she said, to maybe step back mm -hmm. from into yeah. retirement. So. I was wondering where she was on that, and I so, thought I'd get it through you as opposed to bothering her. Yeah, we're sitting down on Thursday, mm -hmm. so I'll report back to you and we do. Great. Um, the next thing I had was, and you had asked me about our new levy uh, work that needs to be done. You're in here first, folks. I would, <laughs> I would ask you, and you know, I'm not demanding it, I don't have it. Desire nor the uh, control to demand you, but I have a folder full of information as to what needs to be done in order to put a levy on the ballot, and would, and I think it would give you a great opportunity to be able to work with the county auditor, uh, the board of elections chairperson, um, uh, our attorney uh, from Columbus, to put to put together a fully functioning uh, levy that can be. Put on the ballot um, November four. And all that information, all that information is in there. Everything that needs to be done, and everybody that you need to talk to. Uh, the only thing that's not in there is, are some of the numbers that need to be filled in the blanks, and some of the description of what it says on the on the uh, actual budget itself. And all of that will be uh, <laughs> here comes Susan. All that will be uh, vetted, as it were, through our uh, legal. Yeah. So you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, and I have to feel it. I got. I have to. And Don has asked 
and you're going out of town, but we've asked for a meeting to sit down. Just um, to really know what, we're, what, what money's yeah, coming and going, yeah, my, what my issues goal. are, what we, I, I have to believe in something, and I do believe in it, but I, I have to, I have to really, I've had a number of questions for a long time, and it may be that we could sit down and have all my questions answered, so I feel confident that I could go um, wage a, um, campaign to um, tell the public that we're asking for more support. So um, I'm just okay. saying I'm, that. I, am, I understand so, what you're saying, and I, I feel as though over the last six months or so, I've, I think I've brought to the fore virtually all the information that I have in the township about how much we're spending, how much is coming in, how much we're going to project that we need in the, in the next few years and what that, that, that income might be. Uh, we can go over it again, but if you're thinking that there's something more out there, more information out there that's, that's, not, been, that's not been brought out, um, that's about it. Would you not agree, Margaret, or would you? Sure. Okay. So she doesn't agree. No, she. <laughs> Whatever you guys want. Okay, well, she does agree. Don, would you like to understand it better? I mean, I would like to see a three to five year projection uh, and that is, and we have the information and I just haven't sat down and made it. And I think that uh, putting that out publicly before we vote to have a levy, to ask for a levy. Uh, is is uh, would be wise. It's not necessary, but it's and we have we still have time to do that. The deadline for uh, making a decision is 90 days before the election. But I want you to know I totally understand what's going on with that for the firehouse, and I totally understand the budget. Okay, there are well, just you there, totally just, understand both of those things. There are. A, about four different things that I don't want to discuss tonight that I'd just like to be, be solid on and, and ask about. Okay. And that, I, that's fine. We just we need I, to get I'm it done. I'm pretty confident that I'm, I, okay. I, I'm going to. I, I would love to take this on. But we I are facing things now that if you'd asked me about it two or three years ago, I wouldn't have. That is the level of professional firefighters and and uh, how much we pay them has jumped. And three years ago, we wouldn't have projected that. So the, the public understands. We are, in my opinion, and my opinion is only based on the actual financial information that comes from our county auditor and the expenditures that, that we set as budgets that by the end of next year, without additional money, we would have to start laying off personnel and we would not be able to respond to, to people's crises or fires in the township without the ability to pay them. Um, we have come to the point where this is not a volunteer fire department. We have volunteers, but it's not the volunteers that, that, that keep this place running. It is the paid personnel. We have to have trained, highly skilled paramedics available for medical emergencies, and we have to have highly skilled uh, firefighting personnel uh, available for fires. And those people do not volunteer anymore. Those people get paid for the work that they do. We, our finances to this point were based on a volunteer fire department. We would spend between our last fire levy, the fire levy before, and I believe the one before that, which has all been the exact same amount of, of millage that we've asked for from the public has produced somewhere between the early days of about $50,000 that had to be spent for paid personnel to about $150,000 that was spent for paid personnel. And after that, in the last few years, after that, we, we moved that balance from, from volunteer to paid to the point where we are not spending a dime on anything for this department other than personnel costs. 
and we are down to virtually nothing on our carryover, our quote piggy bank from year to year, and we would be forced to go into general fund money, which is which has not been earmarked but is available if we run into a crisis. But it would not last very long. Our 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 personnel costs are running in excess of four hundred thousand dollars a year, and as I was saying. We are not generating that from our tax uh, income unless we do not buy new ambulances, we do not buy new fire equipment, we do not buy new equipment for the firefighters, the uniforms, the, the air breathing stuff, uh, whatever else they need. None of that is being purchased. And that those sorts of things have to be purchased over a long period of time. You have to save up for a new fire engine. These things are like $750,000 don't have $750,000. So what we've done in the past is we've generally put like $50,000 a year into a fund for capital purchases, whether it's an ambulance or a fire engine. And needless to say, we don't purchase fire engines very often, not once every 30 years. But both, both of our fire engines are, one of them is over 30 years and one of them is approaching 30 years. And so we've got to start planning for the future. We've got to start having uh, some, some excess capital coming in that we can put aside for capital projects. But the main priority is to pay the people who will go out and save the lives of someone who's had a heart attack and needs to have those personnel well, there. Just what you're saying about the age of the fire engines and all, it's an example of, and I can read this, but it doesn't tell me how old the fire, it doesn't tell me uh, what's the likely shift in the demographics in the township uh, and that increase, there, there's an increased demand for ambulances. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the kind of thing I think we should. And, and we have, yes, we have, those, we have those numbers and the fire chief can get those numbers mm -hmm. to you. Your question about that, and I think I know where you're going, but when we pass a levy this fall to pay the personnel cost, that is going to free up a substantial amount of money that we've been committing to that, to put towards those capital needs. And that's where that money's gonna come from. We are going to live within the means of what, what we What we're, the, the conversation we're having right now, mm -hmm. I think would be good to have more on the basis of like an hour length, mm -hmm. where we include uh, variables uh, like Population shift, age of equipment, yeah. uh, the, uh, you know, the rate of insurance reimbursements uh, that, that aren't so obvious in our just in our financial. And we and we can have that. And you wanted to have that uh, a week or ten days ago, mm -hmm. and we were all ready. And I had it advertised on the website, and then you said you weren't ready to have it. That's right. And we we've got to have this discussion. And I don't mean in the middle of June or the middle of July. Like, how about Friday? What are you doing Friday? I th I'd say Don, you're going on for two weeks. I'll, I'll be gone for two weeks. I think that me and you and either Colin or, I don't know if it's appropriate to meet with Denny. He's been here a long time and he may very well be in the room fire chief. I don't know if I'll say that publicly, but um, <laughs> <I'm not>. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I'd say if you don't mind, Don, because yeah, I never cleared I can when, when I first came on, Zoom, the, 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 I can, I can the letter watch. was in the, more in the future, and there was information that you got that I never quite understood, like, oh, we got to back that up and bring it to this November. I never quite really understood that, and I'm going to be asked that. I mean, I'm going to be asked these questions. Well, what about, you know, people could ask, like, what about the structure of your staffing? Is there anything that be, can be done with the structure of your staffing that could save money? You know, if I'm going to be the, the public face or the public engineer of our, our levy, I want to be able to say, well, well, this is why we have it this way, and um, really we maximize this, you know, just, I have about four things, plus understanding why the levy's coming now and how levies work. And I didn't mean to make this a public discussion, but yes, I'm really glad to do this. Okay. If we can hammer it out this week with, without Don, because he's going away. Okay, as long as we have 24 hours, do we have to do it? We have, it has to be a public meeting. We can't. I'm not it. sure. It's the majority of the. It's the majority of the township boards. I guess. Well, 
There can be meetings for information. There can be meetings for decisions. You can meet for information. You cannot meet for decisions. This would be information, but like I would argue information, but not discussion. I mean, if you went over the discussion, would be asking for facts, not stating opinions. Well, that's the question. Chris, is this, is this a, a township levy or a fire levy? They're the one and the same. The one and the same. Mm -hmm. But it is, is it, it is a fire levy. Okay. But, but it is it is put on by the township. You know my, you know my history, and I'm going to offer my services as a citizen of the town of the township to help you pass that letter. Great, thank you very and much. And inform you in any way that, you, that I possibly can. I appreciate that, and I will pass that along to, to the chief. Yeah. Hired. <laughs> Just like Amy was hired. If, and if I do good, I add another zero to my, my salary. Of course. Zero point zero zero. Okay, cool. Well, well, I think as the more public the process is, the better. The more publicity and the more information. Yeah. And I see that Chris has the weight of, of this on his shoulders, having been here for so long, seeing, you know, the, the science and, and knowing the trajectory. And so it must be pretty frustrating for me to say, well, wait a minute, I got some questions for you. Okay, as long as we've got the time, Marilyn, that's fine. But, okay. but I've, I've been down this road, and I know that that time evaporates very yeah. quickly. And you need to get, you know, you need to get a campaign started. You need to get... You know the, the yeah. word out. You need to do you know, which, all those which things. surprised me a few weeks, like a month ago or something, when you said we're moving. Like, wow, this November, November twenty-two. Uh, we need ninety understand. days. I, I understand that. So I just, we have at some point, didn't we? All of wasn't it further in the future, and it, it, and it came back here to closer in the future. Don't worry about it. I'm there was a reason, be, but we our, don't our get decision it. on the amount of the levy. Uh, and that we want to do it in November rather than next year, whatever uh, needs to be done yeah. by um, yeah, the end of July. Yeah, uh, we, yeah we, we know that, but it's the period between now and the end of July that goes very quickly. Yes. So anyway. I say we make an announcement of a, a special meeting and do it, let's say, Monday, Friday, because we only do how much notice? Okay. And that notice happens. Mm -hmm. But the participants have to be yeah. ready. Yeah. See, we don't key. have the participants yeah. Colin, here. Colin got sick, <laughs> and he's going on vacation on Friday, I believe. I'm he's not Thursday. here. Pardon me. I'm leaving on Thursday. And Margaret's Thursday. leaving on Thursday. Do I have to be there? Yes. Do I have to be there? Yes. No, well, I can't. Huh? I, I, mean, I know. Okay. Well, it's that's why. Yeah. Now that I know, you need yeah. to know. It gets to be always something. That, that okay. Uh, I mean, I can spit some stuff out before, but I'm leaving like Thursday morning, so. And you, you don't. You're not required to take minutes. Any of us. Sorry. You're you're not not required required minutes. You might. No, you might have some financial the, information. The financials. Oh, financials. financials. Yeah. But I, thought, but I need to know. You know. But I, I, I chose Friday out of the hat. It could also be Thursday or Wednesday. But Wednesday's probably too soon. And I'm not available this week for that kind of for a meeting right now. I've got too much going on and I'm leaving now. So Okay, so I cannot go there now. Can we or can we not meet with that one? You get started probably. Okay, we can talk about this. The yeah, column is chapter and verse well prepared to speak about past, past present, and future finances. We all love you, Margaret, but she probably not necessary to confirm what I might say and he might say. Right. I mean, I can, I can spit on reports. Don't trust but when will Colin be back? 10 days. So the 10th, 20th. 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 Why don't we do this the last week of June? Because uh, that gives me chest pains. It, and like, when is the deadline? August 7th, I mean, 8th, to, to, very, very early August. To, to, to say that we're on the ballot. The right. there, there's, no, there's no deadline, but you, yeah. that takes work. Right. Yeah. And putting together a cogent and convincing campaign takes work. Yeah. And to start that mid-July right. or so, 
I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but you know, I'm just trying to give us as much flexibility and time to put this together. Yeah, as that's that's we can. And so am I am I hearing that we can meet this week? So because today well, that's I'm, what I'm we not going I'm not going on vacation, so yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Sounds but good. but we need Don's I mean he's the one who wants to have all this information. Well you can go ahead and meet. I'll I'll get the information when I get back. But I want uh, I want there also to be a public process, not just pop you know, bring it up at the last minute in the meeting. Here's the public. Yeah. You guys stop by Thursday afternoon at four, it'd be great. Or whenever our, our mayor wants to have it. Okay, I think we've had a nice, a wonderful meeting, and we're blessed to have everyone here. This is this is more people than I've seen since Dave Chappelle was here, whenever that was. So I, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn, please. I move we adjourn. I second. We have a motion to second. We adjourn by affirmation.